If it's hot where you live and you want your air conditioning to work optimally to keep you cold during the summer, you've stopped at the right spot to learn about air conditioning and make sure that your car is working right. Maybe learn something so you can go out and do it yourself. Today's video on my 2004 Silverado, we changed the condenser and the orifice tube. I've never seen an orifice tube. I learned what that was myself today. We have my right hand man, Randall, helping us today with some of the detailed work. And he has a lot of experience and his bread and butter is the AC work on cars. So if you guys need help, you don't have some of the tools, we go over some of the steps so you can do it yourself. But there is usually one step that most people can't do themselves because they gotta go out and buy an expensive piece of equipment. Then you can do the rest yourself. So you're gonna break that all down, kind of how do you can attack it. And I have Randall's information down below because you guys are probably gonna wanna get a hold of him to get his help to get the job done at your garage. Or now you know what you're getting into. Now you know you're not getting ripped off. If you go to a shop, you kind of know your way around an air conditioning system. So any of that is the goal of today's video. We're all about building confidence in the garage. That's what the brand Karma Speed is all about, which is a brand I created for audience here on YouTube. We're all about learning cars, every type of car, and then videos like this where we're just doing a little maintenance on a new Silverado we just picked up that is older, has a lot of miles, and we just wanna fix it up and make it work good again. So if you guys like that idea, you like building confidence in the garage, we have our new Chevy Bowtie Jet Tags for your keys. So if you have multiple keys, you know which car is which right away. It just kinda of makes your keys look nicer and organized. A lot of people like these things. So you, go, you guys can go over to commerspeed.com if you like the content, if you wanna support helping individuals build confidence in the garage, I am saving up three to five grand approximately, I'm not sure yet working with a website designer developer to make a really cool idea i have come to life to help people enjoy their cars more and go and get out and enjoy them i don't want to talk about it till it's done so if you guys like the content you want to support what i have going on here go to commerspeed.com pick up a jet tag t-shirt whatever it may be we have some cool shirts like this one right here this volkswagen one for another build we have going on on the channel so if this is your first time here check out the channel i invite you guys to come check out all the videos i appreciate you check out commerspeed.com we have the new resource tab as well which will help you pick out some tools if you're new to all this and whatnot so go check out some new additions on karmaspeed.com and then uh, from here we'll just dive into the process of this air conditioning thanks for being here we're going to be changing out the condenser which is this guy right here in the front i removed the grill already and then we're going to be changing the orifice tube now this truck was overcharged when we got it it was working it was blowing cold air until you got to a stop sign stop light drive through it stopped blowing cold air and it kind of got warm and then as soon as you got some airflow going through the front of the truck it would start to blow extremely cold. So we knew it worked well, but there's something going on. And I have a feeling based off Randall's knowledge and from the history of this truck, this condenser is bent because it was in a front collision. So this condenser is bent, which might reduce some of the flow for the Freon and cooling the AC system down. Combined with an orifice tube that needs to be replaced, we're hoping that that fixes this because the AC actually stopped working once we properly charged the air conditioning. So once it was at a proper level, it started blowing hot air through the vents right here, which is super weird. So we're like, hey, let's just do the condenser, the orifice tube, let's see what happens. We're gonna break that down. The first thing you need to do is remove the grill, which in the grill, in front of it, all you need to know, it's literally the easiest thing ever. There's a plastic clip here, there in between the headlights same on this side and these all you do is you pinch them and then they slide out of these little holes right here and so you do that for all four and um, you get the headlights out of the way and this comes out really really easy that way we can see our condenser and get to it if you want to remove the headlights all you got to do is pull out this little guy and then slide this back and then there's a tab right there where you can get the bumper out. Randall's been a mechanic pretty much his whole life, so he knows the air conditioning system specifically super well. So you guys are gonna learn some things from him today. I'm gonna take over, walk us through this process, change out this condenser, orifice tube, and charge the system, and let him teach you a couple things and kind of learn how to diagnose and figure it out. I'm gonna leave a link in the description to a video that explains how air conditioning systems work. I just watched it myself to refresh myself, and it's really, really rad and kind of crazy to think about how Freon works from it turns from a liquid to a gas and back and forth to keep your air conditioning cool so go check that out after this video i think you'll find it super valuable we've got the low side hooked up right there to randall's gauges and you got what's this line called i don't know exactly what it's called but this right here is how you charge the system and then this is also how you recover so you recover through this this goes up to the recovery machine and then whenever you hook it up to a vacuum pump you use this hose as well this is the inlet outlet then for the whole system Correct, yeah. Much. Yep. This is a recovery machine. This is actually used, they use these for home ACs. 
however they work just as good with these car automotive ac recovery machines are upwards of like four grand and with this machine right here is like 700 bucks so it's a lot cheaper it's not as efficient and convenient but it does do the job if you didn't know Freon needs to be recovered. You can't really release that in the atmosphere. You want to make sure you recover it all because it is bad for the environment. Things do happen, but uh, try and do what you can. Valve opened up pressure in this line now. Randall's plugging in. Tractor just shut off. We have our low side down to zero. Now we can go up here, change our orifice tube. Disconnect it right there now that we have all the pressure out of the line. Looking inside right here, you can see our orifice tube, and that's what we're gonna replace with the new one. To separate the line right here, the orifice tube is right in here, you can see from this side. So now, I'll go ahead and pull it out. I've had these break before, which is super crappy. As you can see, you think your AC system is sealed, but... Is that like dirt and grime? Yeah, this is debris hmm. and whatnot. And that's what restricts Freon flow? Yep. What's your recommendation if they don't have a way to extract the Freon at home, but they want to do everything themselves? Uh, if you want to do it yourself, make sure you take it to a shop. You can ask them to just recover the Freon and they can do that. So once that's in there, you just go ahead and push that down in. Now, anytime you have any of your AC components apart that do have an O-ring, you always want to replace these. So just take a little pick. Sometimes if you replace like a, your accumulator here, it'll come with a new, like an O-ring set. But as you see, this O-ring is pretty mangled and chewed up. So I'm gonna go here in my little assortment and try and match one up to this right correct size here. Are these just, there's not, this isn't like a regular O-ring that's like black, these are green, these are special? I don't know if they're necessarily special, just any time I've done AC work, especially like an air compressor, do the whole kit, I get like a full bag of O-rings and these are just leftovers that they give you. So, I mean, it could be really any color. Now these lines can bend, but you want to be really careful with them, not to bend it too much. And this, on this particular truck, this little nut right here is a 22 millimeter. And once this starts to get tight, you don't want to crank down without holding this other side because you will twist this aluminum pipe. So, we'll go ahead and take our 19 millimeter and hold this nut right here. That's what this is for, to allow you to tighten this down without twisting the pipe up and binding it together. Can you go too tight and blow out that o-ring? You can go too tight with really anything. So with aluminum soft threads, you don't want to crank it down too much, but you don't want it to be too loose either. So just snug it down to your best discretion. Another thing that is good practice whenever you have the AC system apart is to run some flush. So as you can see through those con uh, contaminants on that orifice tube, being that our compressor isn't failed, I have a really good idea that everything else is pretty well off. So we're not going to go ahead and we're not going to flush today, but keep in mind that if you do change out and uh, fill the air compressor, AC compressor, you do want to flush the system out so you don't put those contaminants into the new into the new compressor. So this right here, you fill it up. Yeah, so this is a, you don't dilute this with anything. Definitely don't put water in your air conditioning system. So fill this up. You don't, there's not really a, I'm sure there's probably some directions on here as to how much to use, but just fill it up enough to where you can make sure to clean out the system to where no debris is coming through. You need an air compressor for this. You connect your air compressor line right there. Yep, air compressor line goes in there. Once you have the fluid in here, you take this little end and this goes onto any part of the AC system and then you will blow the fluid through. You don't want to flush out your condenser just because the ports in there are so small. You could actually cause more damage than good. So you would only want to use that stuff right up here to go through the evaporator. Correct. So really you're only using that stuff to go through the main line. So any of your other components like your accumulator, you don't want to be running it through there because the whole purpose of that is to collect moisture in the system. And the same with the evaporator. You can, I've seen it clog up parts by flushing it through there, but you really want to just focus on the lines themselves cleaning those out and this is where you build up moisture and that's where you see water dripping out the bottom of your car the water you see dripping out from the bottom of your car is actually coming from the evaporator itself so 
if you see right here, see if I can't pinpoint it right here. There's this little elbow. This little tray right here actually comes out from the AC box where the evaporator is and all that moisture that's being created on there is what is draining out. And the evaporator is under, inside the car, behind the dash. So you can't see it from here. It's inside the car if you're thinking about where it's at. I'll go ahead and pull off these lines right here. I did already crack this bottom line off camera, so it is loose already. But I'll show you the process on the top side here. And I guess I could get a deep socket and just slide it in here, but I'm hot and I don't feel like walking back to the toolbox. So I'm gonna make do with what I got right here. Now these pull apart. This one's got a different style. So as you saw before, this, there was an O-ring. This is a washer style with a rubber uh, grommet on the inside of that so I do have a couple of these but with this new condenser you will probably have new of these in there in that kit. So the proper way on these trucks to get these out is you want to pull the radiator not pull it out but take it off these supports here being that we do have a fan clutch in the way I don't really want to I'm going to try and to avoid having to take all that off just to pull this out so I'm going to try and feed it through this way if we can in the worst case we have to take that off and Oh yeah. Never done it this way. This is a lot easier. Here she's, she's had better days. My original assumption was we did have some pretty high, high pressure, high side uh, pressures. So looking at this condenser, it is pretty mangled and bent up from the front end collision that this had. So my guess is there's some kind of restrictions going going on in here. It's only like 150 bucks, 180 bucks for this part. So I might as well just replace it. 85. 85 bucks? Yeah. Woo, even better. So if you guys need any AC work, hit me up on Instagram. I do have a lot of backlog work getting this bad boy ready for a show in October. So if you do need work, don't feel bad if I can't get to you right away, but I will, I will take care of you if you can't do it yourself. Evacuate lines even. Evacuation if you just need if you want to do it yourself and you want to just have the refrigerant recovered, I can do that for you too. I can also recharge it, whatever you need. Or, you know. or just do it all. Yeah, just bring your car it. here and you'll do it all. Plastic, huh? Coming a long way with these. Jeez. Oh my gosh. Oh my God, the whole front end looks straight again. So you also have a style that looks like this too, and like this. This is straight metal, no rubber in this. There's looking pretty good. See if we can be two for two. Looking pretty good. So let those bad boys on like so. There's no right or wrong way. They're both the same. So. What we got going on here is right now the, the, the system's sitting at zero, no pressure. So anytime you have this AC system open, what I mean by open is having components removed. So we have these lines removed. Anytime you have it exposed to atmospheric pressure, you want to hook it up to a vacuum pump for minimum of like an hour. Two hours, two and a half hours is best. What this vacuum pump is gonna do is it's gonna bring it down to negative pressure. It'll be down here around like 23, 24 PSI in vacuum. And during that process, what's happening is it's obviously it's sucking out the system and it's removing moisture in the process as well. And in an AC system, moisture is a killer. And it will make your system not run up to what it should be running at. While that thing's going, we went ahead and bolted the headlights back up. We got our plastic holder deal, half or whatever it's called. We got the bottom light on. Now I'm gonna put the top one back in. This harness plugs back on. 
AC's working good. Sitting still. Let's go for a test drive. Joey's going with. Joey's really digging the middle seat. You can sit right next to me. It's feeling real nice. For anyone out there wondering, it is 104 degrees today in Gilbert. And my AC feels like it's probably like 65 degrees. It's getting colder as we're moving. Oh yeah, it's feeling nice now. Got some airflow through that condenser. For science reasons, I got Randall's temperature gauge. 100 degrees, air temp. Just got in the truck, turned it on. As you can see, we've got the air conditioning down to 60 degrees at idle. So we totally flipped this thing around, solved the issue. Thank the Lord, we can sit at stoplights, drive throughs stop signs, sit in your car and eat, whatever it may be, and stay cool. Just got back from a little test drive. AC works good, we fixed our problem. The orifice tube and the condenser, with the little recharge at a proper setting fix this truck so i appreciate randall don't forget to hit him up if you guys need ac work in the phoenix area i have his information down in the description probably the best thing to do would be to reach out to him on instagram don't forget about karmaspeed.com you guys can grab a chevy jet tag karma speed chevy jet tag so we got the karma speed logo and then the chevy bow tie we have a bunch of other cars on there maybe you or your friends have them i really appreciate you guys karma speed is all about building confidence in the garage learning everything we can so that any job is easier or we can just enjoy our cars more any of the funds that i get from karma speed i'm reinvesting into the website right now because i'm building out some things that are super unique and that anyone can use as a resource to enjoy the automotive lifestyle more and stuff like that so i'm really excited i appreciate you guys support on karmaspeed.com it really means a lot hope to see you guys in the next video we're working super hard on finishing the paint on the subaru so look out for that video coming soon that's going to be a going on four plus week process into one video that's going to be rad so see you there